Hey YouTube, this is Bill. Um, I have a video here about the, the old Bose Compact. I say old because it's been out for many years, but people still love it and they're still using it. Uh, in my case, I'm gonna give it a try with this new Bose Sub One subwoofer. And I did not buy this subwoof subwoofer for this particular application. I purchased it as part of the Pro 32 system. But I figured uh, it's able to be run with any type of speaker. So I thought I would give it a try. Even though the Compact has a small eight inch subwoofer, if you wanna call it that, built in. So I thought it would be an interesting little test to see how they would complement each other. In some ways, this video is gonna be an advertisement for the new Pro series, even though that's not its intention. So I'm thinking of the Pro 8 and the Pro 16. Because what the Compact is lacking, but remember it's been out for 10 plus years. So when you get up, when you go to the new system, you're getting a mixer built in. The Compact has a very simple two channel mixer. You're getting Bluetooth on the new system. Here, if you want Bluetooth, you have to add a module, a separate outboard module, which I am going to show you that I am going to run it Bluetooth today. Uh, you do not have reverb in this system. You have to use a mixer if you want reverb. The new Pro 8 16 have reverb. And of course, the, the base units on the Pro 8 and Pro 16 are night and day difference. This little eight inch woofer is a little bit of low end, but it's a little muddy and uh, it's not the same. And then you're looking at the high end, the, the tweeters or the, um, the mid range high modules are much improved, much better top end. The, uh, the compact doesn't have the best high frequency rating. I, and I'll show you the statistics later. It's a, it's a little dull on top. I usually add a little EQ, I add a little treble to brighten it up a little bit. If you notice the sub one is sitting on a, a pad that I put it on and that doesn't come with it. It's just something to uh, isolate the vibration. It's on a hard floor. So that's something you might, they even make, they sell something called a sub do it, I believe. But uh, I, don't, I really don't believe you have to go out and purchase something special. Just find something to isolate it from the floor a couple of inches. I have the subwoofer fairly close to a wall behind it. I measured about 18 inches, and that's gonna give a little extra uh, base support if you have it close to a wall, so that's a factor. And I have the two units close together, the compact and the sub one, only uh, less, than, less than a foot apart. And again, that couples the base. So the, the two base modules, one, eight inch from the compact and then the subwoofer from the sub one won't be canceling out each other. So you, you want to keep them fairly close together. The Bluetooth module I'm going to be using today is something that is fairly new for myself. I'm not sure, sure how long it's been out, but I just purchased it recently. It's called the Presonus MicroStation BT Bluetooth. And it's a very good unit. It has a very good review online. Uh, people who've much more knowledgeable than myself went through a battery of tests. It's a very low noise unit compared to other Bluetooth modules. It has a sub bypass switch right here that I'll be showing you today. So you just press that and that cuts the subwoofer out and then you press it again and the subwoofer comes back on. So that's, I, I really like that where the fact that you can AB it kind of like a studio sub and you can, it's a, it's a great way to set it up also. So what I do is I, I cut the subwoofer, I mute the subwoofer, I turn up the compact as loud as I like, and then from there I bring up the subwoofer um, by A being back and forth until they blend well together. This unit also has a, um, a mute switch right here. So again, if you're playing uh, with a phone and maybe the phone is, is in another place, you can use this, this module as a mute. And the Bluetooth connected easily. I paired it with um, a number of devices. I had no issue. The range is good. And it has a nice smooth gain control. I'm playing it 
about 12 o'clock position. Maybe the most I'm playing it is two or three o'clock. So it has good gain, good preamp on it. And, um, but the downside is you have to pay another $130 to add another unit. And uh, here is a power source, you have to plug it in. So all these things are not necessary on the new Pro 8, Pro 16, because Bose, uh, after, again, after 10 years, has caught up with the competition and has the Bluetooth built in. So that's a great feature. Talking about Bluetooth, again, the new Pro series, Pro 8, Pro 16, uh, they have uh, a Bluetooth app that's, that's great. So again, you can control the, the base unit from a distance, 30 feet, and, and Bose Bluetooth is getting very good reviews. It, it's a uh, very good connection at long distance compared to other units on the market. It's a strength of Bose right now. So that's, that's one more thing that the old compact doesn't have. Again, this video, I, I did not make it as an advertisement for the new systems. It's just that the new systems have really improved that much. And when you're talking about the price difference, I'll show you that in a little while. It, going out and buying this particular system really makes uh, no sense. So what this video is all about is for the many Bo loyal Bo Bose customers like myself who have a compact, who've had it for many years and they've gigged with it from, and it's been reliable and, and great. And maybe now you can build upon it to make it a better system by adding a subwoofer and it does change the, the uh, signal quality considerably. It really adds quite a bit. It makes it into a much better system. But the sub one is pricey. Yeah, now you have to go out and buy a subwoofer to add to it. And I'll even show you later on for the people like myself who also have a uh, S1 Pro. So you can tie in all three pieces together, compact, sub one, and an S1 Pro, and you have a, a really nice micro system. But again, pricey if you went out and bought all the pieces separately, not recommended. But since I have the Compact, I have the S1 Pro, um, if, you don't, if you have those pieces and you don't have a sub one, I, I see it as a worthwhile investment. Let's talk price of this system. So here is the price of the Compact, L1 Compact, uh, $900. And some people were surprised that Bose is even keeping it in the line. For the, for the time being, they are. And um, it, it meets certain needs that even the other systems don't, don't provide. So it's up to the buyer. Here is your sub one. You'd have to add another $800. Again, it's not an inexpensive sub. It performs wonderfully. And what, what makes this a winner in my eyes compared to other subwoofers in this category, 12 inch subwoofers I'm thinking of, is the weight. It's 35.5 pounds, and that is the lightest subwoofer that I have found, and I've done a lot of research on this, um, in this category. The next, the next category up is about 42 pounds, and then it jumps to 60 and 70. So if you need a light subwoofer, this is, this is a great option. Uh, it is it's not inexpensive, though. And then here is the new Presonus Bluetooth module. You don't have to add this. Not, but I'm, I'm just comparing this to the new Pro 8, Pro 16 that has Bluetooth built in. So that would be $130 for the Bluetooth. And then of course you need cabling, a couple of cables. So this whole system, going back to the, the, uh, the compact with the, with the sub one, it comes out with the cabling and the, and the Bluetooth comes out to $1,860. And that just happens to be more expensive than the Pro 16 at $1,800. So I really don't recommend people to get this just because um, I'm demonstrating it. I do have people asking about something like that when they see these videos. They're saying, should I, should I get this system? And the answer is no. I'm, I'm just mixing and matching these systems because I have these components but you can probably do a lot better if you just get the, the right system the first time without buying uh, a whole bunch of smaller components that you piece together. But it is fun and that's why I'm doing these tests. I wanna show you some specs comparing the Compact with the S1 Pro because I am gonna be demonstrating the S1 Pro in the mix. 
So here is the S1 Pro. Uh, the dispersion is 120 degrees and the compact is 180 degrees. So the compact uh, throws a wider dispersion for an audience, so that's a plus. The Bose, the S1 Pro, tops out at 109 dB, and that's one of its weaknesses. It, once it runs out of juice, that's it. it just, it's a small speaker. The compact's a little louder at a 12, 112 dB. I read someplace, some person said, if you need two S1 Pros, go with a compact. I, I personally don't really agree with that because it's only 3D difference, 3 dB. It's not a huge difference, a little louder. And what else can I show you? The, the, the frequency range on the compact over here is goes down to 65 and it tops out at 14, which is, which, which is not good. Your, your most um, PA speakers go up to 20, 20 Hertz. Here, the S1 Pro goes to 17, which is better. But that is one of the weaknesses of the Bose systems. They have a, they're a high end, I don't know, because of the engineering of, the, of their small uh, tweeter mid-range units, uh, they just, they're not getting 20 Hertz like other companies. So again, I have to boost the, the treble, the, the mids a little bit on an EQ to get my bows to sound the best. So when I listen to the compact, the compact here, and I listen with the S1 Pro, the S1 Pro is noticeably a little cleaner on the high end. So they actually work very nicely together. The, comp the S1 Pro adds a little sparkle to the high end that the compact is missing, and the compact has that eight inch woofer, so it has a, maybe a nicer mid-range. It's, it's an interesting combination, and if you have both units, it's, it's worth the carry because the, the S1 Pro is so light. I mentioned before there are some advantages of the previous system, the compact, over the new Pro Series, and here is one of them. Where the columns slide in, there's like a metal bracket, and the, the columns just slide right onto that bracket, and then one column slides into the other. It's very secure fitting, and I kind of miss that on the new L1 Pro 8 and 16. And a matter of fact, um, there's been some reports of wobble, a little bit of play, and I, I've seen it. I do not own the L, L1 Pro 8 or 16, but I've tested it at the local guitar center. And there is definitely a little bit of play and wobble there, which the old system does not have. So that's kind of like a step down. Speaking of advantages of the previous system, this is one of my favorites. The, the high, uh, the, the tweeter mid-range array fits right into the base unit. And it fits so well, it's just, it's perfect. It's like a little puzzle, it fits right in. And this is just great. You don't, sometimes you have a, lo a low ceiling, so you don't need a high uh, column array. And then it's obviously, it, it takes away a little bit of weight. It's easy to carry. It's easy to store like this. So, and again, I think um, people, if they're just doing public presentation, voice, they don't need an array to, to a long throw. So this is a great setup. You can put this on a table. And that's why I believe Bose is not discontinuing this, this particular unit, the compact. There are certain advantages that people love, and like I said, they've been using this for 10 years, gigging, and people have done hundreds of shows, and they still love it. Here I'm using one column extension. So again, you have a lot of flexibility for different situations. Here is that second system I'm talking about. So you have your compact on the left and then about 10 or 15 feet apart, you have your S1 Pro over your Sub-1. It really adds a lot. It gives you that stereo effect. And as I said before, the S1 Pro adds some nice high end that's missing from the compact. The last combination 
I can think of as having your compact on the left and then your Sub-1 centered in the middle and then your S1 Pro on a stand on the right. Again, you can spread it out as far as you like, 15, 20 feet apart. Some people might like the look of this better. You don't have your, your subwoofer co, co located with your compact bottom, so that could be um, a little bit of an issue of phase issues. Okay, wrap it up. So again, I just wanna state um, this system is not something I'm recommending for people to go out and purchase. It's expensive, and I would much rather, for that same price, get the new Pro 16, no, no doubt about it. But for the people like myself who already have an S1 Pro, or you already have a compact, you can add the great subwoofer, lightweight, portable, the Sub 1, or if you have both compact and S1 Pro, it makes a great micro system. Okay, this is Bill signing out and there'll be more videos to come.